Hello data pros, and welcome back to another exciting episode of our Snowflake learning series. In our previous video, we've explored different types of Snowflake stages and their role in loading and unloading data in and out of Snowflake. Continuing from there, we're now going to dive into a lab exercise where we'll see Snowflake stages in action. Let's begin by setting up the lab environment. I'll be using the default role and warehouse that came with the account. Next, we'll proceed to create and use the necessary database and schema. Let's move forward and create some tables. We're going to use these tables to demonstrate data loading and unloading. At this stage, it's important to note that Snowflake automatically generates user in table stages. Each user account is allocated its own user stage, which is accessible exclusively to that user. Similarly, a table stage is automatically assigned for every table created, and it is accessible to all users with roles that have ownership privileges for that specific table. Now, let's try to list the contents of these stages. Since no files have been placed yet, these list commands are expected to return zero records. However, the commands should execute successfully, confirming the availability of the stage. After successfully executing these list commands, it's time to create internal and external named stages. Unlike user and table stages, named stages need to be explicitly created. Creating an internal named stage is straightforward. We simply need to execute the create stage DDL statement, and your stage should be ready to use. In contrast, setting up external named stages is a bit more involved, requiring you to configure authentication and access privileges in your cloud account. I'm going to demonstrate this using an AWS S3 bucket, but the concepts remain applicable to other cloud storage providers with little or no difference. At a high level, we have two options for setting up authentication and access for external stages. Option 1 involves creating an IAM user in your AWS account and assigning the required privileges to that user ID. Subsequently, you generate an AWS access key and secret key for that user. It's important to note that these keys will be displayed on screen only once, so please ensure to store them securely. Once you have obtained the access key and secret key, you can use them in your create stage DDL statement. Right over here, S3 Explore is my bucket name. Yes, it's working as expected. When I list, I can see the existing files available in my cloud storage. Let's drop this external stage and recreate it using option 2. Option 2 offers enhanced security by avoiding the explicit use of secret keys and tokens. In this option, a trusted relationship is established between your Snowflake account and your cloud account, ensuring that the configuration details only function within the context of these two trusted accounts. To implement option 2, please follow these steps along with me. Create an IAM role in your AWS account. For now, copy-paste the same account ID displayed on your screen and input zeros for the external ID field. Assign the required privileges to that role. Return to Snowflake and create a storage integration, referencing the role created in AWS. When describing the storage integration, you'll notice that Snowflake has actually created an AWS IAM user, as well as an AWS external ID. Back in your AWS IAM, navigate to roles and edit the trust relationships of the role previously created. Use the IAM user and external ID that you noted in your Snowflake. That's all, we've now successfully established a trusted relationship between your Snowflake account and your AWS S3 bucket. With this setup complete, you're now ready to create an external named stage using this storage integration object. Great! It works as expected. Now that all our stages are ready, let's shift our focus to loading and unloading the data using these stages we've just created. As mentioned earlier, loading and unloading data typically involves a two-step process. For loading, we use the put command followed by the copy command. Conversely, for unloading, we use the copy command followed by the get command. However, there is one exception, get and put commands do not work with external stages. 
Since external stages are connected to cloud storage providers, you should utilize options supported by your cloud vendor. This could involve using their web portal or supported ETL tools. I have these files stored on my local host. Let's execute these put commands to ingest them into Snowflake stages. For better understanding, I've tried using all three types of internal stages here. Please be aware that you should execute put and get commands using SnowSQL. If you haven't set up SnowSQL yet, please refer to our previous videos for instructions. Snowflake keeps a record of these data loads, so even if you execute the same command without any changes to your local data folder, it will skip files that were already processed. To load data into your external stage, you'll need to open the cloud vendor portal and upload the file accordingly. Let's proceed to list the contents of our stages. Cool. Everything appears to be in order. Our next step is to copy files from stages to tables. When loading data from stage to tables, we utilize the file format parameter to inform Snowflake about the format of the file being copied, which could be CSV, JSON, XML, Parquet, etc. To avoid repeating the file format details, you can optionally create a named file format and reference it in your copy statements. Throughout the loading process, you have the flexibility to omit, reorder, and typecast columns as necessary. For example, since the load user ID field is not present in my employee table, I can exclude it. Similarly, zip code is the last column in my table, so I can adjust the column order. Additionally, the date format differs from the Snowflake default, requiring reformatting, so I can typecast the date field accordingly. Furthermore, you can customize the runtime behavior of the copy command. For example, you can specify error handling options, which determine the action to take when there are errors while loading data. You can also leverage the pattern parameter to selectively load specific files from your stage. Now, let's verify if the data has been successfully loaded into our tables. Great! So far everything looks perfect. We've reached the final part of our demo, unloading data from tables to your stage, and subsequently to your host. To unload data from a table to a stage, we use the same copy statements as before, but this time we specify the stage name followed by the path where you want your files to be unloaded. If you want to unload the data in JSON format, you can adjust the copy statement accordingly. Additionally, instead of unloading the entire table, you can use a select statement to unload specific columns and rows as needed. Finally, let's explore how to retrieve your files from stages to your host. For internal stages, we utilize the get command. This error indicates, the directory is not available in my host, let me create the folder and re-execute the command. I successfully retrieved my employee JSON file to my local host. This get command works for all internal stages. On the other hand, for external stages, you can utilize the portal provided by your cloud vendor to retrieve the files back to your local host. That's all for today. Please stay tuned for our next video where we'll explore more advanced Snowflake features. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with data technologies. We also welcome your questions or thoughts in the discussion section below. Thanks for watching.